Hey everybody, this is Mr. Storm. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your Mad Libs program. I'm going to build it right along with you. Uh, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to type. Now, obviously, when you're building your program, uh, you do not want to just do everything that I'm doing. You don't want to type exactly what I'm typing because your Mad Lib is going to be different from mine. Now, the best way to follow along with these videos um, is to watch a little bit of the video and then maybe pause it and then go try to do it on your own um, on another screen. Or if you have two screens, you can have one video playing. You can have the video playing on one screen while you're working on another screen and kind of just typing along. You don't want to watch this whole video and then try to go back and recreate what we've done. That's usually not the best way to do it just because you're going to forget some stuff, right? So it's best to kind of program along with me while I build this. So I'm going to go ahead and click create here. And I want to make sure I choose a Java program because this is a Java program, right? And I'm going to create, I'm going to give this a name and I'm going to call this new mad lib just because I have, I have, uh, I already have some mad libs programs in here that I've played around with. So I'm going to create a new mad lib and I'm going to click create REPL. And while that's going, let's talk a little bit about what we want to do in this program. So a Mad Lib is something where uh, your friend would say, hey, give me a verb, give me a noun. And you would give them all these words and then they enter them. They would write them down on the piece of paper and then they would read out a paragraph or a story replacing the word, uh, some key words with words that you gave them. Right. I, I'm, hopefully we've all played Mad Libs before. They're pretty fun. But we're going to create that project here in in Java. So notice that I've I've organized my brackets a little bit. To me, it makes a whole lot more sense for my brackets to be on the same my braces, sorry, my, for my braces to be on the same indention indentation level. So like right here with class main, we have uh, our open brace for the class. I want it to be on the same line, the same vertical line as the closing brace for that class. And the same thing with the method here, this main method. I want my open brace to be on the same close or same vertical line as the closing brace. For me, it just makes it a whole lot easier for me to kind of see what the um, see where what the scope is of my program. I, I, I don't want to add extra braces that I don't need. And this helps to avoid that. OK. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is we need to put in some comments with our name and the name of the program. So remember comments are just two forward slashes. My name is Mr. Storm, so I'm gonna type that. And then the name of this program is gonna be Mad Libs. Okay. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to start declaring some variables. We have to think about what variables we are going to need. If you already have your Mad Lib in mind, what your what your output is going to look like, then you have a pretty good idea of what variables you need. I'm just going to put a comment there so I know that's what I need to put in that section. So once I get my variables in there, they're going to go under that comment. The next thing we need is we need to collect the data. We need to collect words from our user and store those words into those variables that we've created. And then the final section of our Mad Lib is going to be, we're going to output a paragraph or something that replaces keywords with those variables they've entered. So this is going to be our entire program. Now I use comments to try to organize this stuff a little bit so it makes more sense in my brain. <clears throat> now, before we even get started, one thing I know we're going to need is we're going to need that Java utility scanner. We're going to need this. We are going to need the scanner class in order to bring in input from our user. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring that in right now just so that I don't forget to do it later. So import Java util. I notice that Replit is trying to finish it for me. It knows that I'm trying to create a Java util or I'm trying to import a Java utility. And it gives me a bunch of options here. Some, some options that honestly, we don't need any of these. We're looking for the scanner class. So um, let's just type it scanner. So Java util scanner. Now 
Notice that there's this green squiggly line underneath the, the uh, Java utility scanner. What this is telling me is that we've imported the Java utility scanner, but we haven't actually used it yet. So it's just kind of reminding us, hey, you imported this extra library, this utility that you're not actually using. Maybe you don't need it, but we actually do. We just haven't written any code yet. That'll go away once we actually use the scanner class. Okay, perfect. So now, now that's in there. I'm not going to forget to do that later. Let's go to our variables. So for mine, I'm going to need, and my story is going to be very corny. I'm just showing you guys an example. I want yours to be more fun. Um, you know, come up with some really cool stuff. Now, um, another thing that we want to make sure we're paying attention to for this project is we are always going to use string variables for this project, right? We're not going to use any numbers or letters or numbers or special characters or anything like that. It's just going to be strings. I only want to focus on string variables right now. Next week, we're going to get into using different data types in, uh, in Java. So I'm going to create some string variables. Now I can create them like this. I can say string noun equals, and then give them blank data. I can say string verb equals blank data. I can do that, uh, but I'm going to have to type out five different lines. I want five variables on this in this program. Remember, there's a little trick that we can use in order to um, speed up declaring variables. If I have a bunch of strings that I want to declare, I can do them all in the same line. And, and again, remember, um, this green squiggly line means that's not necessarily an error. It just means we've created a variable that we have not used yet. So I'm actually going to use that trick. All we have to do is connect these variables with, um, with commas. So verb equals, now I'm giving it junk data just so that we don't forget or so the program doesn't get uh, nervous because we have variables with no data inside of them. And by junk data, I just mean an open and close double quotes. That'll put nothing inside the variable, but nothing is better than an empty variable. I know that it kind of doesn't make sense, but nothing is actually something <laughs> in, in terms of data. Um, uh, empty means there's there's not even nothing in there. There's just, it, there's an absence of things. I know this is getting a little bit complicated, so let's move on. Um, I'm going to create an adjective and then, uh, let's see, what else do I need? Uh, oh, a color. Now I'm starting to run out to the end of the line here in replit. When you get to the end of the line, if you keep typing, it'll just push you down to the next line. The other thing we can do is we can move this over a little bit so that we can see more of the line if we want. And we can even get rid of this whole section if we want, because we don't really need files for this project. So we can move that over and then kind of format that how we want. All right. Um, ooh, and then last one, place equals. Oh, hello. I accidentally hit enter. Okay. So now I've declared my variables. Now, again, notice they're all green because we haven't used them. We've declared them, but we haven't used them. So that section is done. Variables have been created. Next, we need to collect some data and store the data inside of those variables. Now, because I know in this section I'm going to be accepting user from the input, I'm probably going to want to instantiate my scanner class right here at the very top. Remember, instantiate in this context just means to start something. So we're going to start that scanner class scanning for variables, um, and then we're going to remember to close it at the end. Don't forget to close your scanner. So to instantiate a scanner, I'm going to say scanner reader equals new scanner. And then this is going to be system dot in, right? So we're going to, we're going to bring something in. Now, again, it's saying, Hey, you, you've created this reader, but you're not using it yet. Yeah, I, I know. Thank you. Replit. You're very, very helpful. Okay. Now we're going to start putting some stuff onto the screen. Now, so far with what we've written, nothing, if we were to run this now, nothing would show up on our screen, right? Our, our program's not broken, but we just haven't actually put anything out on the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. System dot out dot print line. And then I'm going to say, welcome to my mad libs program. 
Just give them a nice friendly greeting. Hey, welcome. Next, I want to say give me a noun. Now, I'm going to copy and paste uh, because these, you know, this is basically the same. A system out print line is the same as uh, any other system out print line. So I'm going to just replace the words inside the quotes. So that'll save me some time. Give me a noun. Now, I'm putting the space there after the, the colon because I want there to be a space after, uh, at, I, I want there to be a space, right? Okay, and then I'm going to say noun equals, uh, let's say reader.next. And I am going to use those open and close parentheses at the end. Okay, so this statement right here is going to bring in whatever the user types onto the console next, and it's going to put it into this noun variable, right? So that's very, very uh, useful. Now, I want to try something really quickly. I'm going to try systemout.print instead of a print line and see what happens there. So notice that my cursor is now next to the noun or next to that string, and I can start typing. Uh, dog, right? It puts it right on the same line. I actually like that a bit better. So you have print line, which will put your output or it'll put your cursor onto the next line. Um, and then print by itself, which will keep your cursor on the same line. I'm going to use print for this because it's going to be a bit more, um, it's going to look nicer in my final program. Okay. So now I have my system dot out print dot out dot print. Um, give me a noun. I have the, the variable. We're bringing in data. I can actually copy these lines of code here. Let me copy these. And make sure I have five of them. Now, I also, I, I obviously don't want it to say, give me a noun, give me a noun, give me a noun. I want to replace these with verb. And then I want the variable itself to be replaced. Now notice when I click on a variable, it highlights every instance of that variable within my program. That's very helpful because that allows me to see where all of my specifically like my noun variables are and stuff. Um, so I want to replace these obviously because I don't want to keep re replacing whatever's inside my noun variable every time they type something in the screen. Okay, so verb, adjective, And that's going to be, give me an adjective. We want proper grammar here. And for that, I've named it ADJ. And then give me a, ooh, what's next? Color. Give me a color. And I'm going to say color. All right. And then give me a place. Okay, so now we can see that our program is actually kind of working properly. Um, but hold on a second. I said whenever we use a variable, that stuff will go away, right? Well, it's not. I wonder what's going on. Well, if we look here, it says the value of the variable noun is not used, right? The value or the data that's stored inside that variable isn't used at all. We've actually just replaced the data inside of that variable, but we're not using it yet. You'll see these green lines go away when we get into the next section. But this reader, notice that the reader is a different error than what's up here in our noun. The noun says the value is not being used, but in reader, it says resource leak reader is never closed. Oh, oh, okay. I think we forgot to do something. Remember with our scanner class, we have to always close our reader. The problem is if we don't, then it's just going to continuously keep scanning in our program and it's going to cause our, our application to use up valuable processing. Uh, processing speed and, and memory that we don't actually need to use. So open your scanner and then close your scanner as soon as you're done with it, right? Um, so don't forget to close your scanner. So my scanner has been closed and that green line went away. Okay, perfect. Now we only have one last thing to do 
in this program. And really, it's only one statement. We only need to write one more system.out.print line. But our entire boot or our, our entire Madlibs program is going to be inside of, or our, our entire Madlibs output, sorry, is going to be inside of this one print line. Now you can do it on separate print lines if you want, if you want to control the formatting of your, of your, um, if you want to control the formatting of your output string, I'm just going to put it all on one line. Um, it's going to be a long one. So I'm just going to go ahead and start typing. I can't wait to go to the, and remember your space is here, right? I'm about to concatenate these strings together. So don't forget the space and the plus sign here. So I can't wait to go to the place. Sorry, I'm not not doing too well with the typing this morning. Uh, next, Thursday, right? And again, remember the space here. I because you don't want it to be like if my place is a zoo, right? You don't want it to look like I can't wait to go to the zoo next Thursday, like really smushed in together. We want to make sure the spaces are in there. I will wear my color. Oh, I forgot the plus sign. Don't forget your plus signs on both sides of the strings that you're going to concatenate. Shirt. I'll bring my favorite, favorite noun. I want that act that to actually be a period. That's the end of the sentence. I will also verb further than I ever have before. It will be a adjective day. And don't forget your semicolon at the end of your line, right? So that's what this output looks like. Now I'm using five different variables and I've used all of those variables inside this output string here. Um, and notice that my, my green underline went away up here in my variable declaration statement. Okay, so this is the entire project. Let me go ahead and run this and we'll take a look at what the output looks like. Okay, that might be really hard to read. I can't really increase the console text size. I can make this text bigger, but I can't make this bigger, but that's okay, we'll just deal with it. So it says, welcome to my Mad Libs program. Give me a noun, um, car. Give me a verb, uh, jump. Give me an adjective, soupy. That's a good adjective, soupy. Give me a color, blue. Give me a place, um, Denver, right? I don't know. So when I hit enter, it says, I can't wait to go to the Denver next Thursday. <laughs> I will wear my blue shirt. I will bring my favorite car. I will also jump further than I ever have before. It will be, oh, ah, typo there. It's supposed to say it will be a soupy day. Let me go ahead and fix that real quick. It will be a soupy day. All right, so that is the entire Mad Libs program. Now, mine is really corny. It's just a one that I grabbed off of one of the kids' Mad Libs and the resources that I gave you guys. Um, I want you to come up with your own. <clears throat> I want to see your creativity in this project. Uh, there's really no point in, in writing computer applications if we can't be creative and silly and, and, and weird with it, right? So get weird with it. Make something weird. Make something fun. Once you are sure you're... Madlib is exactly what you want. Make sure you click invite up here at the top. Click generate a join link. Copy this link here and paste it into the website URL submission in Canvas to turn in your project. All right. Good work. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. See you later.